So annoyingly, a bit of tree surgery is going on outside the house today, just as I wanted to do this recording. So if you hear some chainsaws and other things in the background, you know what that is, but I'm gonna push on anyway. So let's see what May was like, shall we? So let's start with the Give Energy Arrays. So this is our east-west split system, and that's about 6.8 kilowatt peak combined, 3.4 kilowatts on each side. And in May, this is now the best May we've had. In fact, it's the best month we've had for that system at 904.6 kilowatt hours which is just extraordinary i didn't think we'd do much better than uh, 2023 which was just shy of 900 but yeah we've uh, we've gone past that even um so yeah very very pleased and as for our two new south arrays these are our 1.38 kilowatt peak arrays three panels each three of those panels are going into a fox ess 1.5 kilowatt string inverter and the other three are going uh, into Enphase microinverters. Uh, and this is an experiment I'm running. If you want all of the details on that, go and check out the playlist above my head right now. Um, I'm doing this as a, as a test to see how a string inverter compares against microinverters. And as you can see, currently um, the microinverters are doing slightly better, about 5% better, 201 uh, kilowatt hours for May for the Enphase system, 191.5 kilowatt hours for the um, Fox ESS 1.5 kilowatt uh, uh, string inverter and that's about five percent different and that's been pretty consistent um, over the three months that we've had the system running pretty similar to april's values um, but uh, all three months that have been well above the plus one standard deviation line um, just three extraordinary uh, months and uh, i'm not sure how june's gonna fare it's not looking so great uh, for, for june but we shall see we're still we've still got plenty of margin uh, for error here given the uh, expected level is is down at this sort of level um, so yeah we'll see how that goes um, but for now i'm pretty pleased with the uh, output of all three of my arrays this string versus microinverter experiment is being supported by green team one the solar installers who put the new system in place for me if you're in the Gloucestershire or surrounding counties and would like a solar or battery system, give these guys a ring or check out their website linked in the description and let them know that I sent you. And just to show all three of the systems combined, you can see that uh, we generated a total of 1.3 megawatt hours, um, which is just fantastic. Super, super pleased. And you can see how that's made up of the three systems. We've got the uh, the Give Energy system here, the Fox system here, and the Enphase system here. And uh, yeah, all, in combined, the total gives us um, well more than what we would expect. Um, so uh, yeah, very, very pleased with that. And very quickly, let's compare the kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak value for May. And you can see that the uh, Give Energy system, the east-west arrays, are uh, rapidly catching up. The south arrays, actually, at 132.2 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak of, uh, of generation. Um, the Fox system, 138.7 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak. And the Enphase system, 145.6 uh, kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak. And here's a little bit more detail on the inverter experiment that I'm running. So this chart shows the two new south arrays, um, the output from the string inverter in blue and the uh, microinverters in red. And you can see all the way back to the beginning of March. So the May data is this stuff at the right hand side. And you can see it's been pretty consistent with the microinverters generating roughly 5% extra um, above the um, Fox string inverter on every single day roughly. And uh, if I actually look at the ratio chart, um, you can see that a bit more clearly where what I've got here is the output from the string inverter along the x-axis in kilowatt hours, and then the ratio between the two. So the end phase system divided by the Fox system on the vertical axis here. So one would be equal generation on each day. Each blue blob is one day's worth of generation. And I've put the average there as, a, as a, an orange line, and it's pretty much exactly 5% extra for the uh, the Enphase system on average um, compared to the um, string system. Now, um, there was a small question I had about um, some clipping I was seeing on the string inverter. I'm gonna do a completely separate video about that. I've been uh, looking into that in a bit more detail. It's turned out to be a bit more complicated than I expected, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep that as a separate video. So uh, for now, let's move on to some of the other stuff. Right, so this is the household consumption. And you can see that in May, we consumed a total of 407.8 kilowatt hours and breaking that down into categories you can see that only 4.2 kilowatt hours of that was our air to air heat pump system now i can tell you that that was exclusively used for cooling um, no heating required in may um, but yeah very little cooling so um, pretty much negligible the hot water we're down to 43.5 kilowatt hours using our mixg ihp uh, heat pump cylinder so uh, yep that's still going great and um, I'm going to do a, um, a summary video of that in a couple of months because I'll, I'll have had it for a full year. So it'll be interesting to see 
what a full year's worth of data for that looks like. I'm going to compare that against the, the way we were doing it before, which was using the uh, an immersion element in our hot water cylinder. So uh, yeah, that will give us a really good idea of exactly how efficient the mixed GIHP has been over, over the last year. Um, but yeah, you'll have to wait another couple of months for that one. Um, we used the EV quite a bit more um, in May than we did in previous months, 173.4 kilowatt hours, which I think, yep, that is actually the most we used um, the EV in any given month over the last year or so. Um, I think primarily that's because we've been taking a few more longer trips. And then the remainder of the um, consumption is just 186.7 kilowatt hours. That's, a, that's quite low, actually, uh, when you compare it to uh, previous months. Um, not the lowest we've had. Actually, we had a, uh, the lowest month was in October last year, but then that was because we went away for a couple of weeks. So I'm not entirely sure why that's a little bit lower than normal, but uh, there you go. I guess that's the way these things happen. We didn't use the dehumidifiers or the tower rails at all for May, so those are both um, zero kilowatt hours. But probably the most exciting news this month is that we now have a rolling annual bill that is negative. So what are we down to? Minus £6.83. So our total bill with Octopus over the last 12 months, minus £6.83. So yeah, uh, I was expecting that to take a few more months before that became negative. So yeah, pretty surprised. I suppose it's a consequence of the uh, the three sort of exceptional solar months that we've had and that has uh, really given us that extra export uh, income that we would probably normally have a bit lower than that but uh, yeah very pleased about that um, I think uh, we're gonna be pretty much negative from now on uh, with our annual bill so I'm gonna keep showing this chart to see if it plateaus uh, out at some point so I'm sure it will do eventually um, but yeah uh, I think that's uh, a great achievement and for this chart I've actually had to turn my face off because it was obscuring this uh, top corner here and because our savings for this month was so high um, the uh, the bar was um, hiding underneath my face so I've had to turn that off. So yeah we can see here that um, our estimated total savings for this month £337.70 which is just uh, insane. Um, the actual bill that we got from Octopus was £146.50 uh, minus £146.54 because we were paid by Octopus. Um, if we didn't have the solar and uh, we had gas for central heating and Cat's EV was um, a petrol car like it was before, um, we, it would have cost us £191.16 uh, in equivalent cost. Um, and that's why we've got a savings of £337.70 because it's the combined um, total of these two things added together. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, looking really good, really promising. So there you go, three exceptional months in a row. How much longer can we keep going? Who knows? I doubt it'll last much longer given how June's been so far, but you never know. Right, that's it for me. Thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.